Hi, welcome to my new social media platform. McDonald's is here. Remember the Wendy's Twitter account? How everyone thought it was so funny? Well, now every corporation is like that. On every platform, but especially TikTok. TikTok, unfortunately, in many ways, is an unavoidable part of internet culture. Just like it's unavoidable that Chipotle will comment on random viral posts about Chipotle. Why? Now, we all love corporations here, I know. And we especially love when they make hilarious topical jokes on the Twitter timeline. But Propaganda is a powerful tool, and it can make you forget you're being exposed to it as you're looking at it. And trust me when I say that every single word a corporation puts out is propaganda, regardless of how down-to-earth it might seem. No matter how seemingly innocent, they're constantly trying to convince you that they are normal and should exist. Please don't unionize, guys, please. Corporations exist in constant opposition to the rights and best interests of every single person watching this video. Unless I happen to have a lot of fans that are multi-billion dollar CEOs, but I don't think YouTube statistics will show me that. Despite the fact that they constantly advocate against our best interests, they pretend like they're just like us on socials. No! That's not to say it's the fault of any of these poor social media interns that have to run these accounts. It's a job, I get it. But like most jobs under capitalism, it's the purpose and the role it fulfills that's really fucking devious. Now if you still aren't convinced, or you don't think it's a big deal, let me show you something. So I don't know why there's so much content about Chipotle on TikTok. TikTok likes Chipotle just a little too much, okay guys? It's a burrito. It's not that hard to make it home. Everyone always asks about my Chipotle order, and this is what it is. Rice, black beans, chicken, corn, regular salsa, sour cream, cheese, lettuce, fajitas. Okay, man, that's just like a normal bowl. And I'm not faulting her for posting it. Just like, why does it have 90,000 likes? That's just, like, that's just such a normal thing to get from Chipotle. But of course, the Chipotle Twitter account says, I've seen a lot of orders in my time, and let me tell you, this one. Was it the fajitas? <laughs> What did it for you? <laughs> I like this reply that just says, I've never had Chipotle. What I eat at Chipotle. All mine. Chicken burrito. This is a TikTok with a million likes of someone eating a burrito. Hello? She's just, like, she's just, she eats the whole burrito. Is there, is there something I need to know about this? This one goes out to all the vinaigrette queens. No thanks. And listen, you might not think it's that big of a deal. They're just commenting on the, the, the viral posts of a girl eating a burrito. And they're just being, you know, quirky and relatable. Like every corporation is. But the actual Chipotle TikTok account does post original videos. So we're gonna look at how relatable and quirky and normal Chipotle is. Please don't unionize, guys. Please. Welcome to Chipotle. What can I get started for you? Yeah, can I get a bowl, please? Yes. Yeah, white rice. The white rice. And I'll do uh, black beans. Black beans. Yes. There we go. Uh, I'll do steak. Steak, good choice. Yeah, can I get like double? Oh. Yeah. I don't like this. Hey, <laughs> I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. What's the point of this? If you, if, listen, I understand that not everybody wants to make all the things that you need to make a burrito on the fly. You want to just go and buy a nice, decent burrito for cheap, but you don't want to go to a real Mexican place for whatever reason. That's understandable, I guess. But why the fuck would you order trays of the ingredients from Chipotle? Just Make beans! It's not that hard! <laughs> this is besides the point of the video. I just don't know why they're doing this. I don't know who does this or why they think it's normal. Go to jail. Double steak. Alright, that's good. Um, I'll do mild. Mild. Uh, sour cream. Sour cream. And guac, please. And the guac. Okay, anything else I can get for you? Nope, that's it. Alright. NEXT! By the way, that has almost 900,000 likes. What is the point of that? Why is the video? Why does it exist? Can I get a double flex? I'm dying. Why? <laughs> Maybe it's because you ordered fucking 10 Chipotle burritos in the last week. And of course they reply, for real. Shut up! <laughs>
Yo, you boys trying to rip Chippy, Chipper, Chippy, Chippity, Chippaquiddy, Chippaquiddick, Chipper, Chipsky, Chipalty. <laughs> One hundo P chip and Dale. Let's not, maybe. I, I actually refuse this. You know you could make nachos in your Chipotle lid. What? Start by getting your go-to burrito bowl. And of course you need a side of chips in case of Blanco. Then you're gonna preheat your oven to 350 degrees. And while you wait for this, take the lid off your bowl, place it upside down, super important. Add the chips to your base and pour over your queso blanco. Toast that up for just a bit. Honestly, it should only take a couple minutes. Then you just take them out and layer the contents of your burrito bowl and ask everyone if. That's just warm chips. You can have warm chips and you, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> Took her to a restaurant where they cook in front of you. The Chipotle TikTok account loves to just shotgun all kinds of different extremely cringe content to just see what sticks. And a pair, and a pair, fuck. What? Hello? And apparently it all sticks because they all fucking pop off. I'm tired of it. I throw a build your own bowl to Chipotle Friendsgiving. Chipotle. All right, garlic lovers, it's finally here. New garlic guajillo steak just dropped and you seriously have to try it. If you're wondering what it tastes like, well, let me tell you. I bet it tastes like garlic, actually. I bet it, I bet, you know what? I bet it tastes like steak and garlic. <laughs> Bro, this has almost 18,000 likes and it's a fucking ad. <laughs> you guys are fucking stupid. If you like this, there's something wrong with you. But I want the carne asada. Go to a taqueria, you freak. There's like, what do you live in fucking Maine? There has to be Mexican food that's actually good around you. This is just like me inserting my take about Chipotle too, but like, come on. <laughs> but the pollo asada, try something new. Fuck you. <laughs> Looks like you guys are a little thirsty for watermelon. Luckily, we have some new watermelon limeade you can try. Again? an ad. Not even that good of one. Listen, the fact that it's cringe and that it sucks is totally besides the point. It could be great. It could be hilarious. It could be very on point. But there's always going to be a mental barrier between you and the relatability of the content when it's made on behalf of a gigantic corporation that has no interest in what the fuck you care about. There's a difference between an actual content creator who listens to their audience and like has a relationship with them and fucking Chipotle. They fuck. Shut up. They give you slop and they don't give a shit what you have to say about it. Try something new. <laughs> That's enough about Chipotle. I can't handle any more of it. What I want to move on to next is Wendy's. Because the Wendy's Twitter account started this whole relatable, quirky wave of social media management, let's see exactly what they have going on on TikTok. So if you look at the Wendy's hashtag on TikTok, it's suspiciously a lot of people talking about how much they like the Wendy's food. You know, the square hamburger. My favorite. But what's extra interesting to me is sometimes Wendy's will comment on these posts, which is like, to me, it's a little suspicious. Chipotle commenting on a post that has over a million likes, I understand. But Wendy's commenting on a post that has 60,000 likes is a little different to me. It just gives me the impression that they're just paying people to say that their new weird burger is good. It's probably not, I'll tell you that much. Hey, I'm gonna be trying some of the new items from Wendy's. The mozzarella chicken sandwich, garlic fry. Here's what it looks like. Mmm. <laughs> So it's super good. I saw someone else that tried this and said that it was really dry. So I made sure to ask for extra marinara sauce. I was not expecting it to be good. Hmm. What the heck? I like these too. It's, it's, that's french fries. Surprisingly good. I'll take it. Shut up, Wendy's. <laughs> Typically, you have to disclose if your content is sponsored in any way, uh, legally. But TikTok is such a new platform and uh, people don't really care that much. What, are you gonna call the FCC? No. So I want to use this as a good example to point out that a lot of the content that you might consume as it relates to corporations like this on TikTok is probably sponsored and you don't even know it. Which is all the more insidious. They do not give a shit. They just want you to think that their weird mozzarella burger is good and you know it's not <laughs> the actual Wendy's TikTok account um, has just a hilarious bio sir this is a Wendy's TikTok account yeah um sir this is a Wendy's drive-thru remember that joke guys remember 2016 <laughs> So you might
might now understand how, you know, the Wendy's TikTok account only has like 300 likes on a post because they put the music over the man talking for some reason. <laughs> I don't know what he had to say about the Wendy's, but why'd you have to silence him? This is cancel culture. But also looking through the Wendy's TikTok account and seeing how few likes they actually get on their posts kind of puts into perspective how much clout Chipotle has on TikTok. Why are you guys liking Chipotle posts? What is wrong? dollars an hour. I just want to put that into perspective. <laughs> this is why my order takes forever. Work breaks be lit. If they're so lit, why don't you pay people for the work that they're doing adequately? But no, then the burger would be more expensive. Suddenly I'm craving a four for four. It, it, like this shit works somehow. I don't get it. If you comment anything like this on my channel, I'm gonna go to your house and kill you in <laughs> Minecraft. Trying to reverse engineer the mango pineapple lemonade to figure out why it smacked like that. If anyone in your life talked like this, you would immediately recognize that they are the most annoying motherfucker on the planet. If all I talked about with the people I hang out with was like, man, <laughs> trying to figure out why my last video banged so hard, no one would want to hang out with me. Because that sucks. It's like, of course they have to talk about like weird shit like this because they're a fucking- it's an ad. It's all an ad. They've turned ads into entire accounts. It's weird. Wendy's made a whole meal just for me. <laughs> yeah, it's mine. It's all mine. <laughs> I like that they couldn't even pay him enough to actually eat it. <laughs> the last account I want to talk about today is Taco Bell. They also have a lot of totally not sponsored content that they comment on. Only eating at Taco Bell for a full day. Carissa, that was not your idea. <laughs> That's what people do when they're broke and really, like, not doing well. I've never tried Taco Bell breakfast before, and look at how cute this crunch wrap is. It's got this thick, crispy hash brown inside and bacon. It's super cheesy and crunchy, but- Like, people don't talk like this when it's not an ad. You know what I mean? It's just creepy. It's weird. The breakfast salsa was just okay. I think it definitely could have been spicier. And the breakfast quesadilla also had that nice grilled flavor. I got the- She got a crunch wrap and a breakfast quesadilla. That's too much. That's crazy. Bacon one, because I guess they're out of the sausage like nationwide. They're also out of the Mexican pizza. So for lunch, I got this cheesy gordita crunch and you got to get the Doritos version. It's super crispy and cheesy. This is definitely one of my favorite items at Taco Bell. Of course, I also had to try a crunch wrap supreme, which is like twice the size of the breakfast one, but it had a lot of meat in it. I also tried it with the spicy ranch, which again, I feel like could have been hotter, but it was nice and tangy and kind of sweet. And this the best crunch wraps are cute. Like I just don't want this. I I just don't want this to exist at all. It would actually make most social medias a universally better place if corporations were not allowed to have accounts like this. Like post your fucking regular ads or whatever on Twitter, but like, you can't, you don't get a TikTok. You're not allowed to have a verified account. You, you just, you can't. There's no point. It's just a big ad. Taco Bell has birria now. We're at the Taco Bell headquarters. They wanted us to taste test a new menu item. It's the grilled cheese dipping taco. So here we have the shredded beef grilled cheese dipping taco. And it comes with a little bit of their enchilada dipping sauce. And we're just gonna give it a shot. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's totally what I say when I also eat Taco Bell. Oh, wow. Yeah, young food beast, sorry. I don't believe that this is not a sponsored post. You can omit the hashtag ad all you want, but you were invited to Taco Bell headquarters to try their new Berea taco. Berea? <laughs> Why did I say it like that? There are a lot of people in the comments at least saying like, no, this is not how a birria taco is supposed to be. Like, just not shredded chicken. The sauce is not right. Like, this is fucked. Which is like, at least nice. But it's weird to me that people will point out that Taco Bell is not authentic Mexican food. But then they'll be like, Chipotle doesn't have carne asada. I guess I just have to get something else at Chipotle. Try something new. Like, I'm exhausted. I'm tired. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> 
Hi besties. I just got home from grabbing drinks <laughs> and I didn't eat dinner yet. So I have Taco Bell. Um, I didn't know nacho fries were back. So I already ordered yes potatoes. Then I realized nacho fries were back. So we got both. I don't know what to tell you, but there are so many accounts posting about Taco Bell and Chipotle that call themselves foodies. Now foodie culture has kind of died down since the 2010s, but like the concept of being a foodie is kind of insane. Just saying that you're into food, but like the implication is that you're into food that's like good. You can't be like, I'm a foodie. Here's my Taco Bell order. No. Eating what employees would order? Taco Bell. Today's employee suggestion is a crunch wrap supreme with no lettuce or tomatoes, add extra sour cream and jalapeno ranch, half Baja Blast and half Mountain Dew. It's actually like one of my favorite things from Taco Bell, so I'm excited. The ranch definitely adds a little something to it. I give it like an A, dip it in some cheese. Ain't in this cheese. Oh. Baja Blast and Mountain Dew. Delicious. 10. Mm -hmm. Part 13. This is another post from the same person I suspected was sponsored by Wendy's. And I suspect that they're sponsored by Taco Bell too. Like there's just no reason to eat Taco Bell on camera like this. There's no reason to do this. Love seeing everyone's crunch wrap specifications. My crunch wrap specifications is no crunch wrap. I don't like the crunch wrap. Oh my god. Taco Bell worker here. Try the chalupa with a bunch of sour cream. And then she did it. Chick-fil-A worker here. Spicy sandwich on a multi-grain bun, she did it. McDonald's employee here, a quarter pounder with extra pickle, she did it. What else do you eat, dude? I can't imagine being a fast food influencer because A, you're like working alongside brands that are just like so fucked up, but B, that shit's gross. Yeah, I eat fast food. I'll eat a Taco Bell on stream every now and again, but like, not like this. God, it's a little weird, man. DMing unprompted like that just has like such weird vibes. Even if it is from the Taco Bell official account. The Enchirito from the 70s is now back on the menu. How do I eat this? Fork, fork and I, fork and I. This content is so relatable. I love eating slop that was discontinued in 1978. It's my favorite meal. <laughs> You can play football with a burrito wrapper, but you can't eat a soccer ball. Think about it. You can't eat a burrito wrapper. So this joke does make sense. Okay, the Ambition Accelerator Summit was this last week. Think social impact science fair mixed with pitch competition. This is extremely fucked up. Ambition Accelerator Conference. This is how you make a sausage breakfast crunch thing. Yes, brown, sausage, eggs, sausage, cheese, and fold. And there it is, the crunchy thing. Thank you, Pete Davidson. You seemed so excited about that. You were so into it. Look at him. Listen, I think it's a whole separate conversation to talk about how corporations will co-opt things like AAVE or hire queer people to be like, look guys, we love gays and POC, look. When it's like, if you love them so much, they make up a huge part of your workforce, pay them enough, <laughs> pay them normal. These corporations actively suck the surplus labor value, the money that each individual employee generates. They receive like 5% of it versus the 95% that Taco Bell takes and then pays their social media manager to make really cringe posts. They gave that money to Pete Davidson. <laughs> I don't want him. I don't mean to imply that if they were making less cringe ads, somehow they would be better or good in any way. What I'm trying to say is that they're always going to be cringe because they're always going to be directly linked to the corporation because they're always going to be advertisement. And co-opting social media trends and, you know, popular things on TikTok doesn't make it any better. In fact, it makes it worse. I would rather it just be a normal fucking ad. But normal ads don't get fucking hundreds of thousands of likes like the Chipotle TikTok. TikToks do. I don't think we as a collective internet talk enough about what it means to be operating in the same place as corporations do. Especially as they're actively trying to act like the fellow kids and jump in on trends. You aren't immune to propaganda, but the first step to counteracting it is recognizing it. Social media managers do have valid and frankly not ideal jobs being cringe on behalf of corporations that are actively robbing their workers. I don't know if this video made any sense. I'm just kind of pissed off. The main point I want to make is that you need to be aware of the kind of things that you're consuming, both in your mouth 
and on your phone. And be aware of how vicious and snake-like corporations are and how willing they are to manipulate you into thinking that they're on your side or that they're good in any way. Thinking neutrally about Taco Bell or Chipotle or any of these corporations and the way they run their business is still better than actually addressing the reality, at least to them. They're not on your side and we should be constantly advocating against them and for the rights of the workers that they constantly steal from, including the social media managers. But that's gonna do it for today. Thank you so much for watching my video.